Good day, folks. Welcome to today's reading of Ruby on the Outside. Yesterday, we left off right here at the bottom at We, and we're going to start here at the top. So we are supposed to be changing for swim time, but Yvette seems ready to play her guitar again until Beatrice groans and Yvette gets her feelings hurt, and while they are arguing, Margaret and I go back to drawing and writing. This pot will not boil. Oh, good. Can I read it now, I ask? Of course, Margaret passes the notebook back to me. I am so excited for you to read it. Yvette is sulking and refusing to go to the pool with us. Beatrice announces free time. Elise is bouncing her ball. I open to Margaret's new pages. The story is different. It's not about mermaids or elves or witches like our last one. Margaret is watching me read, which makes it hard, but her story is so good. I did something different, Margaret says. I hope that's okay. I couldn't think of any more for the elf story. Yeah, me either, I continue reading. This story is about us. At least I think it is. It's about two girls who meet one summer at a summer camp that has only three kids and two counselors. The two girls become best friends. When I come to the end of the Margaret's three pages, I look up at her. Marion, is that you? I ask her. Margaret nods. And Pearl? I point to myself. And Margaret nods harder. A big smile breaks over out over my face. I love it, I say. Phew, I'm so glad, she lets out her breath. Okay, then, your turn, and I'll work on the illustrations. I take the notebook and settle in. I'm pretty confident now that my writer's block is cured. Margaret's story seems easier for me to follow. Real life stuff instead of fairies and mermaids. Write what you know. Isn't that what Mi Miss Genevieve would say? What comes out of my head, into my fingers, and down through the pen I don't think much about? I mean, I'm thinking about it, of course, but I'm not forcing it. One thing follows me another easily, like a reflex. There's another thing we learned in science class. There are voluntary and involuntary muscle movements, like a sneeze is involuntary and the way your foot kicks up when the doctor knocks you in the knee with that little rubber hammer. And writing a story about how your mother died and when you were first born is probably, most certainly, one of those involuntary muscle action that you have no control over. I don't even realize what I've written until I pass it back to Margaret, and then I realize that in order to keep the lid on and keep anything from spilling out, I just switched pots on the stove completely. Oh, Ruby, Margaret has just finished reading my chapter. Is that true? I know exactly what she means. What do you mean? I ask. Ruby looks down at the notebook in her hands. I mean, is this, the, is this part true about your mother? Is that why you don't have a mother and you live with your Matu? Of course, Margaret could, would figure it out. She knew Batu wasn't my mother, and now she thinks sh she knows why. And I did it on purpose, didn't I? The old bait and switch. I killed off my mother in the story because I don't want a mother. Not a mother in prison. Not a mother who is running my, ruining my life. Well, it was a long time ago, I say. I try not to look Margaret in the eye. I'm so sorry, Margaret says. She lowers her head. I can't imagine not having a mom. Margaret looks like she's going to cry. No one has ever cried for me. How could they? I guess. I've never told anyone about my mom, and now the first time I have, it's a big, fat lie. No one would feel sorry for me if my mother was in prison for murder, but if my mother was dead, well, that's a whole other story. It's okay, I say, because I don't know what else to say. Oh, Ruby, you don't have to talk about it, Margaret says, if you don't want to. I don't want to. In my story, I wrote that my mother, or rather Pearl's mother, died in childbirth. I got that from the book, Sarah, Plain and Tall. Luckily, I've read the book three times, so I had the details readily available. I'm just so sorry, Margaret is saying, wiping her eyes. Me too, I say. Oh boy, if she only knew.